I'm Emily, I'm 21, this is my channel and today I'm going to be doing my 10 things I wish I'd known before moving to Paris. A lot of it is relevant to Erasmus but I think if you're moving out to Paris for whatever reason, even if you're not from the UK, even if you're not a student, a lot of this is still going to be helpful. If you watched my first video you'll know I've just spent six months living in Paris which is a crazy amazing experience and I learned so so much so I thought it would be helpful to share some of those tips with you today. The first problem I came across in France was where to set up a bank you have. So the first thing that I'll suggest is going to LCL Bank. And I literally went in half an hour before they closed and they helped me set up an account that same day. That is going to depend on your branch but a lot of the other places I went to said you have to wait two weeks for an appointment to even talk about opening up the account. When you do go to set up your bank account you're going to want to bring some kind of proof that you're a student, so your student card from your university a copy of your passport and I also bought along an attestation d'hébergement which just proves that you are living where you say you're living. The account that I opened up was a student account, it cost me one euro per year. Definitely, definitely go to a branch of the bank that is closest to you because that's the branch you're going to have to go to if you want to sort anything out in branch. The second thing that you really need to be on top of and know all about before you move out there is any paperwork that you're going to need. As a student there were a few forms that I needed to fill out. The first one I had to fill out a few months before I actually left and that was for Erasmus. Another piece of paperwork that I had to sign was a learning agreement. If you are working in an internship like I was, that's something that you're going to need to do. You need to get it in within 10 days of starting your job and make sure that that date that it's signed on by your employer is before the date that you start. For any internships you're also going to need a convention de stage which is just a contract. If you're doing any type of work you, you're going to need some type of contract before you start. Keep on top of the paperwork, it is important and you will regret it if you don't. Definitely not speaking from experience there. The next thing is accommodation. I think that this is the first question that everybody asks. Paris is a fairly small city and there is more demand for accommodation than there are places to live, which means that prices for rent can be astronomical. I personally was very lucky with my accommodation. I went on my university year abroad Facebook page, I said I'm moving to Paris at this time, can anyone help? And a girl actually got back to me who, having checked with the university and a couple of people, was a real person, was trustworthy. She showed me the, the flat on Skype and I managed to sort it out without even going out there. That is a very unusual situation. You have to be so careful with those types of things in Paris because it's just ridden with con artists and scams. I would definitely recommend just getting out there early. You can physically go and see the flats and you're going to get a much better idea of how far your money's going to get you. Just use your common sense, don't hand any money to anyone uh, before you've seen a place and you should really have some kind of contract drafted up before you hand them over any money. So this kind of comes off from accommodation. If you are going to be living in Paris and if you're on a low income, particularly if you're an intern or a student, um, then CAF is definitely something that you want to consider. So CAF is just essentially a grant that is given to you by the French government to help you out with your rent if you're on a low income. This is something I knew about before I moved out there and I just didn't get round to it. Everybody that I spoke to said that CAF is the bane of their lives and it was worth it in the end but you really have to be dedicated to getting that money. You can actually do a test online to find out how much money you can get. I'll leave a link to that in the description bar as well. If you do want to apply for this grant, what you're going to need is a copy of your passport, a copy of your birth certificate, which apparently needs to be translated into French professionally, French bank account details, and you're also going to need proof of where you're living. And you're going to send those off to your CAF office. I know some friends who just sent off their English version of their birth certificate. They did get the money in the end. The other thing to note is that you can only receive this grant from the second month that you're living in your accommodation. So that's something to consider if you have the opportunity to move in a couple of days before the beginning of the month, then you should definitely try and do that. The next thing I really wish I was better prepared for before going to France was the whole process of just being ill. When I was in my first job I was under a lot of stress and it actually made me quite ill. I decided that it was time just to take a day off and just to recharge a bit. So I called work in the morning, I said I wasn't feeling well and I wouldn't be coming in. And then they said, oh okay, but it is French law that you have a doctor's note. So just so you know, it costs usually around 23 euros for just a regular trip to the doctors. As an intern, I was earning about 11 euros a day. Apparently one euro is deductible, but whatever type of insurance you have should 
should cover a trip to the doctors. When I did leave, they did give me some insurance documents um, to fill out to get reimbursed. If you're from the UK, you'll have an EHIC card, or at least you should do, which gives you free healthcare in any EU country, which I didn't show them as soon as I got to the health centre and I probably should have done. So although my trip to the doctors cost 23 euros, my tests that they told me that I needed when I was there actually cost a lot more than that. So when I went back for the results, um, they told me I needed to pay up in cash 110 euros. In terms of actually getting an appointment for the doctors, I would definitely recommend going to a centre de santé. Those are dotted all around the city. If you just Google centre de santé and then whichever arrondissement you're in, it's going to show you the address of somewhere. And you can just go along to those and get an appointment the same day. The next thing I'm going to talk about is phone contracts. So when I went out there, I decided that I was going to use my English phone most of the time for any contact with my English friends, and I would just get a cheap French phone, and I would put you know, a few euros on that and just use it to text French friends and call them if I needed to. What I realised later was that even though I was on a kind of pay-as-you-go system, any credit that I'd put on the phone would expire at the end of every month. There are a lot of apps that you can actually use on your UK phone which are going to make communicating with anyone with a smartphone a lot easier. If you are from the UK and you don't have a contract already, then I would definitely recommend signing up with Three. They have a scheme which is called Feel at Home, and what that means is that you can use your phone contract as if you were in the UK when you're in any of their Feel at Home destinations, which includes France, which I guess is why it's called Feel at Home. The only thing to note is that it works, I believe, for up to three months, and then you need to sort of take a break and go back to the UK uh, before you can continue using it. I think I'm still glad that I had the French phone as a backup because there were times that I needed to provide a French phone number when I had deliveries or something like that. The next thing I really wish I'd known a bit more about is transport in Paris. The first example of that is the Navigo Pass. It works on the RER, which is the Parisian train system, which also goes into the suburbs of Paris. It works on the tram systems, it works on the metro, it works on the buses. I went for a Navigo Découverte card. I just went to one of the kiosks at one of the metro stations. You're going to need to bring along a passport sized photo and five euros. To top it up is a bit more. If you want to top it up for a month, it costs somewhere around 67 euros, but that could have gone up in the new year. Zones 1 and 2 encompasses the main city. If you want to go any further out into the suburbs, those are different zones that's going to cost you a bit more. But having said that, there are times when the zone restrictions do not apply. Those times are the weekends, bank holidays and mid-July to mid-August. The next thing I wish I'd known about before going to Paris, I've just written down doing stuff. And this just refers to how I wasn't particularly organised when I would actually go out during the day. So you definitely want to have a plan. Another great way to avoid that kind of situation is to make sure you have some apps on your phone. Yelp is a really popular one that you can use, not just in France, but all over. It's just really useful to find places near you and read people's reviews about them. Another great app slash website to use is La Fourchette, which means the fork. That's just going to show you some restaurants. You can search for your area, you can look at reviews, and if you book a reservation using the app, then you can also get a discount on your food. Number nine is language learning. Obviously I knew I'd be doing language learning by coming to Paris, but Paris isn't the most French place you can go. It's very international and there is particularly a lot of English. So what I would really recommend is getting involved in some sort of program that allows you to practice your French. One place that I found really helpful was called conversationexchange.com. I just went onto the website, you can post little adverts saying you know, I am a 21 year old English person living in Paris looking to practice my French. What you'll find is because you're a native English speaker, there are going to be a lot of French people who are going to want to practice with you. The other thing is conversation exchange is totally free. There are actually quite a few companies that offer similar experiences. One that I had really good things about is Polyglot. There's another company which my friend told me about which is called Franglish. They run speed dating style evenings. My tenth and final thing I wish I knew before moving to Paris is a bit of a funny one. It's one I almost wish that I didn't know because it's something I learnt for myself, but I think that you should know that if you're unhappy in the situation you're in on your year abroad, you can change it and by taking a risk, as scary as it might be, you can fully improve that situation. When I was in my first job, as I said, I was under a lot of stress 
and I took the decision after two months to leave that job. I started working in the startup, which was a totally different experience. If you'd like to know a little more about what I'm really talking about there, I have written a blog post about my experience. It just explains it a lot better than I can without making a whole separate video on the matter. So I'll leave a link to that in the description bar as well. So you're just going to learn things about yourself and learn new skills that you couldn't hope to learn by staying within your comfort zone at home. So those are my 10 things I wish that I knew before moving to Paris. I hope that any of you who are moving out there might have some of your questions answered now. If you don't, then please leave a comment down below. If you did find any of this helpful or just interesting, please give it a thumbs up and I would love it if you subscribed. I am going to be going to Italy in a few short weeks, um, moving there for the next five months of my year abroad. I have a new video on the channel every Monday and I will see you next week. Bye!